Today I'm going to show you how to set up a point-to-point -point link using an NStation 5 on WDS Bridge Mode. Some scenarios where a WDS Bridge Mode is ideal would be linking to building, an IP camera scenario that doesn't have wireless capability, or even linking your main house to a guest house. Pretty much any deployment where you want to set up a wireless link instead of using Ethernet cable across. Before we begin, make sure to take note of the WLAN MAC address of both units. You can find the WLAN MAC address by looking at the sticker label at the back of the units. It is best practice to configure the units first and establish their links before mounting them on top of the roofs. In this example, we will connect the NStation 5 to a computer to access its setup page. First, we will set up static IP address on your computer's LAN to be able to communicate with the default IP of the end station, which is 192.168.1.1. We also want to disable the wireless adapter of the computer temporarily when doing the configuration. To set up static IP, go to your network and sharing center and go to change adapter settings. Right click on local area connection Click on Properties, click on Internet Protocol version 4 TCP slash IPv4, click on Properties, click on Use the following IP address. In this example, I am using 192.168.1.10. Click on the Subnet Mask field and it would automatically use 255.255.255.0. Click OK and click Close. Now we are ready to access the setup page of the NStation 5. Open a browser and type 192.168.1.1. When prompted for the username and password, type admin for both fields. On the main page, you will see the WLAN MAC address of the unit. Take note of it. Now let's go to operation mode. Select WDS and select bridge. Click on save slash apply. The end station would now reboot to WDS bridge mode. Once the device reboots to WDS bridge mode, click on WDS link settings. You can set up security for the link. In this example, I am using AES. Just input the desired password on the password field. Click on Enable on the first profile and input the MAC address of the other end station, where you want this end station to connect to. Remember to click Accept in every changed settings before going to the next page. Next, we are going to change the IP address. In this example, we will set it to 10.1.1.10. And the default gateway would be 10.1.1.1, which in this case is my router address. Click Accept. Next, we will go to Wireless Network. In this page, we will set the channel. To make sure our link would work, both APs should be on the same channel. With this, we greatly recommend using 40 MHz only for the channel HT mode and select a non-DFS channel. 
In this case, I am using channel 157. Click Accept. After doing all the changes, we will click on the Save slash Reload tab. You will see a list of all the changes we made earlier. For these changes to take effect, we will click on Save and Apply. Since we want to change the IP address, the next time we access the page, we should be using the new IP address. After configuring the first unit, you can proceed with configuring the second unit, doing the same... Oh. After configuring the first unit, you can proceed with configuring the second unit, doing the same exact steps. Just remember that on the WDS link settings, it should be the MAC address of the opposite access point where we should be inputting. The IP address should be configured uniquely for each access point to avoid conflict and to make sure our bridge link will work. Once we're done configuring both units, we need to check if the link is working or not. Access the setup page through a browser using the new IP configuration set for the unit. On the page, click on WDS link list. If the link status is up, it means that the unit is already communicating with the other unit. The RSSI level is the signal level. If the value is close to zero, it means that the signal is better. Negative 19 is better than negative 91. The other unit's connection status should also be up to ensure connectivity between the bridge. Some of the other settings that you can change on your WDS bridge is the security. You can choose whatever security you want. Make sure each unit has the same security settings for them to communicate. Also, you can adjust the transmit power settings. In this example, the transmit power settings is grayed out. In order to change the transmit power settings, we need to disable the green feature. To do that, simply click on Operation Mode and uncheck the green box. Click Save and Apply. The AP would reboot. Once the access point is done rebooting, we can now adjust the transmit power. In a long-range point-to-point -point setup, we will set the transmit power to 25 dBm. We can set it as low as 11 dBm or as high as 28 dBm. The value depends on the distance between the two units. Now that our point-to-point -point bridge already established a link, you can already mount the devices. The N Station 5 has a mounting hardware. Simply slide the hose clamp onto the back of the device and use a screwdriver when tightening the placing on a pole. When cabling, use CAT5E shielded cable or better. Using unshielded or UTP will not provide protection against electrostatic discharge. Using STP also protect against electromagnetic interference. If possible, Run cables into the pole to help insulate from any air surges of static. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.